There's a message coming through from Archangel Michael that has some urgency behind it. I'm not going to mess with cards this week. Uh, just watch for the content that I'm putting out. I post every week. So if you are not coming here and seeing it, I see comments all the time. I'm glad you're back. I didn't go anywhere. Okay. I did not go anywhere. And this is part of what we're going to get into is, is the idea of expectations. So this uh, sort of 911 message coming through is because uh, there's short circuiting. Short circuiting. And this isn't news, that part of it. Uh, pardon me, I'm going to take off my glasses here because this is <laughs> I'm getting annoying. Um, there is this sense of we're missing the point. We're missing, we've, we've dropped the ball here. We've dropped the ball. What might that look like in the coming week? Absolute destruction. That would be the more obvious thing. We are going to be seeing a lot more, obviously, division. But Michael is coming through and saying that people have missed their point of strength. And this is sort of a humanitarian issue, right? Crisis, of course. But when we say humanitarian crisis, people are thinking about war. They're thinking about the atrocities we're seeing humans doing against other humans. And yes, it's that. But when we, you know, the general population out there, when we hear about things like that, what I'm hearing is that because we're all, I don't want to say this. I don't want to say we're broken. I don't want to say that. This is more of a feeling that's coming through. I have to interpret it. We're in this dysfunction, right? This dysfunctional space where we don't even know how to process things anymore. We're not seeing the truth of things. We have, and I'm putting it this way, sort of solidified our place being puppets. And when we hear about the atrocities going out in the world, because we're in that survival mode, we tend to shut down, right? We don't want to hear it. We don't have those options anymore. This is in your face now. This is going to be in your face. I'm going to make another video for, because we have the 1111 energy portal coming up. This is not a great thing to be coming through right before that, because if you don't know, 1111 is uh, supposed to be an energetic upgrade. It can be, unless you haven't been doing it, then it's learning your lesson all over, the, all over again. And I think everyone everywhere... Um, the feeling I'm getting is that it's going to be more about repeating a lesson than it is about moving on. And I'm saying that in a worldwide sense. So that's concerning. Uh, so I'm putting that out there for you. The other thing I want to do is the 2024 overview. That's an important one. When I get quiet, I'm just, I'm feeling this out. I'm listening. We're going to be seeing the breakdown in our individual lives as well. 2024, I'll just give you a little um, preview on that. This could be a year where a lot of people lose their jobs. There could be another um, global crisis. And I'm not talking just war, just war. I'm talking there could be something else that really, it's trying to drive home a point here, okay? And I'm not trying to say that God's source creator is so cruel that, you know, just throwing all these horrible things at us until we learn our lesson. I, I don't, I don't think it's that. I think it is, <laughs> Michael is letting us know that it is how we think and the energy field that we are functioning from, that not being restored and the energy we're putting out there is creating the division, is creating the hate. And then there is the anger and the absolute, uh, you, you know, you know, the response, right? That comes from that. Now, if you think this doesn't relate to you, here's, here's a perfect example of this. Expectations. When I started this channel, I started out with a weekly reading. And yes, I would use angel cards and, you know, and it's nice. And I'm not saying I'm never going to use angel cards again, 
they're nice visuals. There's colors that can, you know, have an interpretation for somebody. The words could have an interpretation for someone. But people became so dependent and had such hard expectations around what a reading looks like that they would often put in the comments, reading starts at, and it was when I held up the first card. There's a reason why I'm going through this, okay? The expectation to have daily card readings. I can't really go in depth in any of those, but our attention span has weakened, and it is a weakness, okay? We have weakened that, and so now people have become uh, very dependent. And it's not a bad thing to want a little hit of inspiration, a little two minute. Like it's, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying that when push comes to shove and if those aren't offered, people unsubscribe, for example. You know, you're punishing the creator that's putting the YouTube creator or the social media creator. Punishing them. Now, that's not, I'm not, this is where our brains go. Oh, look at her complaining about her channel. See, right there, that's the whole point. That's the problem right there because your brain went there if it did. So let's hang on to that here as an example. The reason why I bring that up, it's a lesson about expectations. It's a lesson about getting into a lull. When you're in a lull, you're not doing critical thinking anymore. You're not really tuned in anymore. You're waiting for someone to spoon feed you information. And if you've ever gotten a reading from me, I always, always, when someone says, give me a fortune telling reading, I give them a heads up about that and say, hey, watch giving your power away like that. Because if you go to someone who's not ethical, they could just tell you whatever they want. They can scare you. This is, these are all just minor examples of how we leave the door wide open for our influences to come on in. Archangel Michael is saying, this needs to be known. Say it, put it out there. And he's also saying they will not hear you. So you're not going to hear me. You're, you're going to, if you watch this all the way through, You'll hear my voice, but you won't hear my words. You won't hear my message until you experience it. So just be ready for that. All right. If you're watching this whole video and you walk away going, what the heck was that? <laughs> Welcome to angel messaging, which it can definitely be like that. Because as I always say, angels and archangels want us to experience the message. They're not just going to, they're not ones to spoon feed it to you because that's interfering with human free will. So it goes beyond this week, obviously, this week of releasing this message. But as you go through, you are going to see absolute destruction in your own lives. <laughs> and I know some of you are like, dang. <laughs> no, you will see destruction in your lives. You will see very odd things happening. I had someone come into my home last week. Someone just came into my home and acted like it was no big deal. And police got involved. It was, guys, I that happened. What's the 911 message here, Michelle? The 911 message is that what I said at the beginning is that people are short-circuiting. Now, does this automatically mean that people are bad? No, 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 no. It's, it's the opposite of that, Okay. This gets into a difficult message because it gets very nuanced. We're duality consciousness beings. And so we want things to be black or white. You're on my side or you're against me. We have a hard time with unity. And that's the point. We have a hard time with unity. So even as I present all this in the best way that I can, there's going to be some bit of misinterpretation until you experience the message. So be ready for that. Is that a punishment? No, but you might have weird things happening. Yeah, distortion, um, people not thinking clearly. Uh, the big one is broken empathy. Broken empathy. If you are in a situation, when we talk about this all the time, right? We talk about what darkness working through a human looks like, what the behavior is like. 
And I and unfortunately it falls on deaf ears. It falls on deaf ears. And people only want to be comforted. Well, guess what? That's like cheating on your homework. And now you know nothing. You got through. You got the grade. But you didn't benefit from it. Right? So I think that's where we're at here. So what might we see? Let's give some examples here of what Michael's trying to bring through. Broken empathy. How many of you have, you know, you've had something happen to you hang with me here because we're going to get in the weeds here and our brains have a hard time handling this we tune out right let's see if you can stay practice practice the focus practice the critical thinking here use this time to do that okay something has happened to you and maybe you go and you tell one of your friends like hey i just had do you feel guilty for saying hey this thing just happened to me because they treat you like you're a nuisance for having an experience that they now have to pay attention to or else they would look like a bad person? Or do you have people redirecting the conversation back to them? We're going to get into this. Hold on just one second here because <laughs> people who have dark, see, I'm just going to generically call them dark energies because I don't want to put too many words around it. Also, you lay certain terms down. People either shut down or they have their preconceived notions about that and then you can't get through. Um, the way darkness looks working through a human, it mimics the good sometimes. Okay. So this is, this is why our hearts need to be in tune and online with the brain. Okay. This is why we, the whole system, <sighs> Ugh, a lot to get into here, guys. Hang with me. Uh, I'm just another human here sitting here with you. So if, if you've had something happen, let's go back to that example, and you're talking about it and someone is like, oh, that's weird. Anyway, back to me. That's an obvious one, right? Or someone thinks, and, and I'm not trying to like go into comparing circumstances. I got it worse than you do. I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to go down that road per se. Um, but there are times where someone is making a huge deal out of something that is probably a hell of their own making, number one, right? Or they're going through a soul contract lesson and they're just self-absorbed. They're just self-absorbed. And so this thing that's just so overwhelming, right? A lot of victimhood, a lot of victimhood. Um, I'm going to create this world where I am the victim. That way I can control you. I'm going to control the words you use. I'm going to control how you see me. Where'd your mind go? Some of you went gender identity. Is that what you're talking about? I know you did because I can feel you. There are people out there who genuinely, you know, you're non-binary, whatever, you know, however you identify. That's beautiful. You do you. Let's shift the thinking though. Yeah, I'm going down a sticky road and I don't care. I love you all. But, you. Oh, well, there's no but. I love you. Period. Full stop. <laughs> but let's talk about this other thing over here. Uh, how many of you get upset when someone um, uses that as a tool of victimhood? Let's go deeper. Uh, uses that as a tool to get out of things. As a distraction. Now, am I saying that anybody who, who identifies as anything outside of male or female is bad? No, and if your brain went there, that's what, oh, I got the finger out. Look at that. If your brain went there, that's what I'm talking about here. That's the message. We're not looking at things for what they are. There's a difference between somebody who's like, hey, this is who I am. I'm, I'm out here and I want to be loved and respected and understood. Cool. I mean, yeah, obviously, <laughs> right? And somebody who's like, oh, I'm in trouble. You know what? You're triggering me right now. You know what? I have this, this, and this going on. And, the, you know, the, the gender identity was just an example. But maybe somebody goes into their anxiety. I have anxiety. Don't we get tired of people using those things as a manipulation tactic? And then it detracts from people who are actually trying to do good. Or it detracts from people who are actually having that experience, right? Somebody who does actually deal with anxiety, 
it now makes it so that no people are going to have a hard time having compassion for them because there's going to be the association with the victimhood. See how damaging this is? See how bad this is? We got more. We got more. <sighs> the broken empathy. Let's go back to the example of, uh, you know, interacting with others. Do you feel like you have to keep everything on the surface? You're not allowed to have a bad day. If you do talk about having a bad day, people switch it back to them. Or they make you seem like you're weak because you had an experience. Or you're having a hard time because, right, they'll, they'll twist the words. Darkness likes to mimic, okay? So this is where people can twist it around on you. Well, you brought it on yourself, right? And this gets into like victim blaming. Again, we have to, we have to pinpoint and be strong enough to look at where the manipulations are. This is where we're at. I bet a lot of people aren't even going to get what I'm saying. You're not even going to get what I'm saying. Again, you'll experience it. You will experience it. We have too many I was going to say, maybe let's call it false faces out there. If you feel my heart, you, you, you're you there with me. You understand what I'm getting at here. Watch the comments if you want to see people short-circuiting. Just the fact that I said gender identity. Lots of beautiful people out there who could be like, I feel you. I'm tired of people making me look bad, right? <laughs> I am tired of that. Or, you know, people lumping us all into the same category. Look at the worldwide conflict going on. Do you really think it's about this group against this group? It's darkness against light. And the darkness and light don't exist within something like this whole group is light and this whole group is dark. As I said in a previous video. This is a fight against innocence and a fight against innocent people. See, we're, we're working with this duality brain and we're looking and allowing ourselves to be distracted by all these things and to be manipulated. Now, I know you guys are smart too. A lot of you are watching this. You're incredibly smart. But guys, I have a lot of narcissists who follow me. They're the ones that get in a huff and they want to do cancel culture and they unsubscribe or... Um, I, I've had people short circuit and start reporting my channel because they want to get me. Why? I laid something down that they were not ready to look at. Okay, maybe. Um, or I just didn't say what they expected me to say. You see what I'm saying? And going on the attack. There's a reason why I'm going into all of these examples because these are the nuances. These are the things that we have been trained to ignore. How many people are out there just yelling in the streets and they don't even know what they're talking about? How many of us are walking through our lives going, that's just how it is. Don't, don't speak out against this. When I had a corporate job, that was the most toxic <laughs> work environment. Oh, you name it, sexual harassment, intimidation, threats. Uh, and, and your coworkers, like literally watching someone get screamed at for nothing. We all know that that person did nothing wrong and either out of fear or maybe they agreed with it, didn't say anything. Archangel Michael's coming through here and saying, you need to look at the messy pieces. You need to look at the messy pieces because what's to come, you're not ready. You're not ready. Well, I'm not ready. We're not ready. How many of you have an interaction with, and this is all about us humans, right? So you're having an interaction with somebody and it's just like, oh, that's so unkind. Not in the, okay, now I told you how I want you to behave and you're not doing that. And now I'm triggered because you're not doing as I say. That's different intentions right it's intentions we have a lot of false faces out there people pretending to stand for something but they don't okay uh false gurus oh this was one this was part of what made me hurry up and get in front of the camera because there was this like um 
Like, just get this out, get this out. And it came from the false prophets. Be ready. Be ready. A lot of false prophets, people coming out. And again, it's all manipulation. It's all um, trying to lower people so that they can be infected. Infected. There is not one labeled group that you can point at and say they are all good or they are all bad. Simplistic? You would think. <laughs> you would think. But none of us take each interaction for what it is. We come in with our biases. We come in with our assumptions. We come in with our hatred and our fear. Here's the other problem. The avoiders. The avoiders. You will see this really, I, I think I've seen it living in Colorado Springs. I would see it all the time. It's a very Christian town. And I would see it with a lot of the churchgoers. Now, that does not mean that if you go to church, you're bad. It does not mean that, like, nothing. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, we can't just keep jumping to conclusions about things. We have, and it's gotten us to here. And so there needs to be some awareness around this. But... There would be this, oh, you know, Christian ethics, we, we're kind and we help people. Oh, actually, literally, a dude fell off his bike in the mountains. Did I ever tell you guys a story? I got a story. Dude fell off a bike, was hurt, probably broke something because he couldn't move. Um, and I was hiking and we, we were in a spot. I, I had to walk his bike back. I had to kind of help him kind of hobble back to the parking lot, which was not close. We had to, you know, kind of come down. And he's trying to call his friends who are still on their bikes. Now, these friends, uh, they were, I don't know if all of them were in the army, but I know at least one other one also in the army. This was an army guy. Very religious. So religious, like they'd be the type to be like, have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior? Let me tell you the good word, right? Like they, they were this type, okay? And I'm helping this guy down the mountain. And he asked me what I do with my life, basically. What do you do for a living? And I told him. And he went silent. And you could tell he was still trying to be like a good Christian. But this goes against all his beliefs, right? So he's treating me like I'm now the devil, a lot of people walked by him and I scooped him up. Okay. I, I sat with him. I sat with him. The sun was about to go down. I think this was like in September. So it was one of those, I remember the sun was kind of going down a little bit sooner. This dude did not have a jacket on. He was just in shorts and a t-shirt. It was about to get really cold. And there's wildlife everywhere. And zero light. If you've been out in the mountains, it's not lights on the trail. He didn't have his phone on him. We had to keep using my phone, okay? And his wife, uh, okay, here's another example. I'll go right into this. And I swear to God, if you're sitting there saying, what are you even talking about? You're exactly what I'm talking about. And that mentality is exactly what I'm talking about. So when he wrecked and I came up to him, I'm like, are you okay? Uh, he didn't have his phone on him. He had left it in the car and trying to call his wife. The wife's not picking up. Obviously, she doesn't recognize the number. And finally, we keep calling. Finally, she picks up. And I, I identify myself. I say, I'm with your husband here. Um, he fell off his bike. We're on the trail. And she sits there. You guys, this is literally what she does. She goes, what? Wait. Wait, what? Okay. This is part of what we're experiencing. People can't. It, it's like they're in another world. Literally just explain the entire situation to her. And it, it please don't do this. This is the excuse making, right? The enabling, the, well, maybe it was this, maybe it was that. Why? Because you want to feel better about the situation? You won't, you don't want to believe that people are, their minds are completely deteriorating? You don't, you don't want to believe that, huh? Okay. Uh, so I just passed my phone over to this guy. I'm like, I'm not going through all this again. And he's getting annoyed with his wife. And he's like, it's me. I'm here. I, I got injured. We're trying to let you know that I'm injured. And she goes, okay, so how long are you going to be when you get home? Who are you with? 
Okay, so insecure. <laughs> if we were, girl, if we were having an affair, do you think I would have called you and identified myself and said, hey, I'm sitting here with him? Like, whatever, right? So there was this whole thing and she was just so, I'm going to use the word oblivious, oblivious, um, disconnected from empathy. But as I learned when I was taking the guy down to the parking lot, trying to just get him to the car waiting for his friend who had the keys. I learned that they're all Christians. They're all churchgoers. Again, as I say this, where did your mind go? I'm offended. Good for you. Okay. <laughs> Listen, hey, yo, I, you might be new here. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the point is, is that this facade of being a good person. When it came to practicing being a good person, they all failed. One is judging me. Again, dude, I just scooped you up off the trail. I'm helping you get to help. The guy was not okay. He was not okay. If you've ever been or seen a mountain biking session, you know it's pretty serious when they wreck, okay? The friend comes up. This dude comes up and he's got like these big eyes and just kind of smiling at me. And he's like, you know, thank you so much for bringing my friend back. So he was good at putting the smile on. He was good at pretending to care. But if he really cared, he would have gotten down there faster. Because I, we couldn't get him to pick up the phone at first. And then when he did, yes, he was at the top of the mountain. He had to make his way down. But I know that trail pretty well. And, um, I know how long it takes to get down from the top when you're hiking. You go faster on a bike. This dude took like a half hour to get down from where he was. He probably could have gotten down in like 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 15. So I could, again, I'm jumping to conclusions. So I have a lot to learn here too. But my mind went to, did you finish your bike ride before you came down? Your friend's heart, okay, needs a hospital, where are you? Now, he could have gotten lost, whatever, but he didn't say anything of the sort. There was no apology when he showed up. He just showed up as if he just stopped his bike ride. He was just done, ready to go home for the evening. And the wife, who was more concerned about when her husband was going to get home and who are you with, than the fact that I'm alerting you that he's hurt. This is all the stuff, the type of things that Archangel Michael is trying to get through to us. Don't call people friends when they're not friends. Are they loyal? Are your friends loyal? Are they truly supportive? Could you go to them with your problems and they're not going to judge you or just go through the motions and then switch the conversation back to them or do the judgmental silent thing? Now, this is where we get into that thing of twisting things around. If you are somebody who constantly needs the attention, you're constantly trauma dumping on someone and they're just kind of quietly listening. You see those two situations are, they're not the same, right? I'm talking about somebody who almost feels like they can never talk about their problems because they're wrong for having problems. As opposed to someone who's always playing the victim. These are the things that we need to start getting better at looking at. As far as what's to come, um, again, there's there are going to be a lot of happenings, a lot of happenings because people are short circuiting. You'll know this when you, if you can still see, I don't know, a lot of people have just lost their ability to see what's going on um, or think that they're smarter because they think they see what's really going on. We get that with a lot of conspiracy theorists who want to put themselves above everybody else and um, I'm smarter than anybody else. If you look at it, a lot of conspiracy theorist people, and this is going to tick a lot of you off, and I don't care because <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and tiptoe around you. It doesn't mean that everyone's bad. But if you look at a lot of them, it's y'all are stupid and I know the truth. You're all messing up your lives, but I'm doing it right. Or getting obsessed over a topic and then thinking, no, you know, like nobody can give you another perspective. And that, that's it too. It goes down that path as well. Nobody else is allowed to have a perspective. You won't sit there and back somebody up. 
but you want everybody else to have your back, right? Um, are you absent <laughs> when someone's going through something, but you expect everyone to come running when you're having a problem? When someone says, hey, the, this thing just happened and you don't care. But when it happens to you, suddenly it's the end of the world. This is part of our brains being broken here. And I'm not saying that in a psychological way. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about in a spiritual way, in an energetic way, in a soul contract kind of way. This is what Archangel Michael is bringing through. And I asked for some help in delivering this. And I felt like it was going to be messy. And uh, <laughs> here we go. Because we're under the confines of social media and people's attention spans and uh, expectations. I bet you expected this to be bullet pointed. This isn't a corporate conference, people. This is spiritual talk here. And it doesn't take a nice, neat little form that satisfies our ego. I, I, you need to hear this. Let this be a time of self-examination. Vow to change, to heal. If your heart's on point, you're still with me. For one, um, or I guess there's <laughs> now got guardian angels in here too saying, well, some people are watching to, um, just to know what messages are being put out there and to try to stop it. Um, you're going to see more greed. I know. Imagine even more greed, more self-centeredness, um, people just being unhinged, unhinged. And yeah, some of them, God forbid, are going to, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, act out, but, um. Most of them are just running their mouths. Most of them are just running their mouths about things that they're not really truly educated on. Or they're running their mouths from a place of their own hurt and pain. Not caring what someone else might be going through. We're in survival mode. Our duality consciousness has hit a big wall here. And... In order for us to be able to come through, we can't be fake. We can't be phony. We can't put on the false face. Don't stick with friends who don't care about what you're going through. Do you have friends where you're, you know, or just anything, like maybe it's family members, where you sit there and you're just quiet because <laughs> they're doing all the talking. And then if you say anything, they kind of go, oh, uh-huh, and just dismiss you and get back to themselves. Or they use it against you later on. Okay, this is the splitting. This is where the worlds are splitting. The dimensions are splitting. This is it. I'm going to end this part here. I have some other uh, filming to do. I have some clients this afternoon, so i gotta, I got to get this done. Comment down below. And feel free. Feel free to say, this felt like rambling. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm so confused. Go ahead. Go ahead. But come back in a week, two weeks even. Comment again about how you experienced the message. Hearing it or just sitting through it is one thing. How did you experience it as the week goes on? We'll leave it there. I love you all. Take this seriously. And we'll see what happens next. Take care.